when you walk in the God kind of faith, you have the final say. The Christian has the final say. I know you've been singing that song. Who has the final say? Jehovah has the final say. Can I shock you here? <laughs> Jehovah does not have the final say. Why? Because the Christian is not operating under the name of Jehovah. The Christian is operating under the name of Jesus. That name has the final say. Ephesians chapter 3 says, I bow my knees unto the Father, of whom the whole family in heaven and on earth is named. That name is the name of Jesus. What are they saying? It says that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things and beings in heaven, of things and beings on this earth, and of things and beings under the earth. Jesus. When we get born again, we are baptized into that name. Pastor Prince, word here. The Father and His Relations And now showing, the Sons of God. You see, so, today I'll be talking about the Sons of God. I think we have the Fatherhood of God, now we are talking about the Sons of God. Amen. Amen. Are you, are you ready for the word? Yes, yes. You are ready to shout a big hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we have a lot of important things to us. See, the Christian is a champion. In the sight of God, the Christian is not a defeated person. You are not a defeated person. In the sight of God, you are not a defeated person. The Christian is not a victim in this world. Now when I say a victim, it means that the Christian is not a person that anything can happen to at any time. That is not the Christian. That is not the man God has raised. It used to be like that with the first Adam. <laughs> but you see, after the first man sinned and disobeyed God, God had to raise a man higher than the first man. Because if he, if he raises another man like the first man, then that particular man will fail like the first man failed. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So we are not victims in this world. We are born again to rule. But you see, we cannot rule out of ignorance. We can only rule out of light. Light rules over darkness. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So the Christian as a person, in the sight of God, is not regarded as a human being. In the sight of God. Now, when we are born into the world, or when we are, we are born into the world, we are regarded as a human being walking around. When we get born again, there is a change. Now listen. Sometimes people don't understand this thing. When we get born again, there is an instant change, an instant transformation, an instant translation from being in the realm of humans to being in the realm of divine. Did you hear what I just said? The Christian, say, I am a Christian. I am a Christian. The Christian is a partaker of the divine. The Christian is not a partaker of humans. Do you know what I just said? Yes, Do you know what I just said? Yes, the Christian is what? A partaker of the divine. That means that he is a sharer of the divine. He shares part in divinity. He shares part in deity. But it depends on that particular Christian and what he knows. Because if you see yourself as a human, then you will live as a human, you will talk as a human, and you have experiences of humans, then you will die as a human. But when you see yourself as a sharer of divinity, then you will live like that, like a sharer of divinity. You will talk like that, you think like that, you live like that. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Many Christians say we are just born again to be the way we are. The only difference is that now we go to church. That is not being born again. Being born again is a translation 
is a translation from the realm of humans to the realm of divine. Why is it a translation? Because when you are born into the world, you are born as a human being. You carry the life of your father, the life of man. You are a natural man. See, there are different kinds of men. When the word man is mentioned in the Bible, there are different kinds. There is the natural man. There is the new man. There is the spiritual man. And there is the man that is of, of full age. <laughs> you know what I just said? So when we mention man, there's a whole lot of when somebody says, oh, okay, man. It is still not clear to us who are born again and know the scriptures until he specifies which kind of man he's talking about. You know what I just said? So you see, when somebody says a man, to us who are born again and have received light, it's a generic statement. Or a generic term. Until he specifies. Because the one who is not born again lives as a human. He lives by the blood of his father. He lives like that. But when we get born again, it's different. The problem is, when we get born again and there, our spirit is made new. We stay there. We remain there. So we just say, oh, we are born again. We are born again, waiting to go to heaven. That is not what God intends for anyone. <laughs> John chapter 1 It's very very important The gospel of John Chapter 1 From verse 12 It says John chapter 1 The gospel of John chapter 1 verse 11 Verse 11 to 13 It says he came unto his own And his own received him not But as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. Verse 13. Then it defines the children. You see? It defines the children. It says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become or the authority or the right to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. Then verse 13 says, Children which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Is it not clear here? Now he tells us which kind of children he's giving birth to. He says, Children which were born, not of blood. The one who is born into the world is born of blood he is born of flesh he is born of the will of man he is born of the span of his father you see so he is a natural man so when we get born again we are not living by the blood of our father we are not living by the flesh of our father we are living by the life of God when you get born again, the life of God, the sperm of God, the life of God is imparted into your spirit, the very life and the nature of God. Now, that nature is supposed to reside in your spirit, but that life and nature is not supposed to stay only in your spirit. You know what I just said? That life and nature is supposed to be operational in your body. First Peter chapter 1 verse 23 says that being born again it is not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible seed. It says being born again not of. You see? But a lot of us Christians have been trained to think that we are of the corruptible seed. But God says not of. That is where the point is. So if you have a problem with this teaching it is because you have not been taught well. You've been taught that you are born of a corruptible seed. Yet, the Spirit of God tells us this, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed. Born of 
an incorruptible seed. So the Christian or the child of God is born of incorruptible seed, not a corruptible one. Now we're talking about corruptible seed, talking about a perishable seed, the life of your father. The biological father. But when it talks about an incorruptible seed, the word seed there is sperm, sperma. An incorruptible sperm. So a human being is born of a corruptible sperm. And so he is prone to corruption. He is prone to death. Everything that affects man or humans affects such a person. Because you see, his sperm, his life is corruptible. It's perishable. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you see, Adam by his transgression subjected the whole human race to corruption. So the scripture says that having escaped corruption to last. But when we get born again, we are translated. We are born of an incorruptible seed or an indestructible seed or a seed that cannot, that is a life that cannot be destroyed. The scriptures call that the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we are not born again to be victims of what humans are victims of. Else, what will be the difference? What does the Bible say? It is the whole world groaneth and traveleth in pain until now. The whole world is in pain, in, in birth pangs until now. What are they waiting for? They are waiting for the showing forth of the sons of God. Where are the sons of God? We are. Why can't we show forth? Because we don't even know who we are. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So when we are born again, we are moved from the realm of humans to the realm of the divine. We are people who have received into our spirits the life of deity, the life of God himself, the nature of God himself. The character of God Himself. That is what happens to your spirit when you are born again. So when you say you are born again, it is not a small term. Did you hear what I just said? Oh. Did you hear what I just said? Yes, Pastor. There is a change of nationality. Hey. I said what? There's a change of nationality. Yes. So that the Bible calls us the citizens of heaven. Not the goers of heaven, the citizens. Who is the citizen? The one who resides in heaven now. Why is he calling us that? Why is he not calling us the citizens of this earth? Because from the God's perspective, we are different. It is up to us to change that. So when you talk to your pastor and you go and say you are Ghanaian, it's true. That's what, that's what they all believe. But you have to change your way of seeing from being a Ghanaian to being a citizen of heaven. A heavy knight or a Zionite. Why? Because they've been a trans, a change. But it begins from your spirit. That's why I say, when a person gets born again and he enters, he comes to church. The one who enters the church and the one who is born again and leaves the church are not the same people. Listen very carefully. When a person is an armed robber or a sinner, not born again, and he enters this church, once he confesses the lordship of Jesus and gets born again, he has become different. He is not the same person who entered. But it begins from his spirit. So his color is still the same. His stature is still the same. But something has taken place on the inside. What I'm telling you is that what has taken place on the inside is what defines you in the sight of God. And what has taken place on the inside must not remain on the inside. It must come into your soul and come into your body and come out of your body. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it's very important. Being born again is not a religious terminology. Being born again is not just that we have joined the church. I belong to this particular church. No. 
Even though when you are born again, you will belong to a church. So that you can be raised in that church. In the word of God. But going to a church doesn't mean you are born again. So there are many who go to church, but they are not born again. There are many who are born again, but don't know what has happened. They just know that their name is in the book, in the church. So I was baptized in this so-and-so church. My name is even there. But you die like men. What does the Bible say? It says, for they know not. It says, neither do they understand. So they walk on in darkness. But I have said. You see. So we rule. Our minds are supposed to be ruled by what God has said. Like this. It has been born again. Not of corruptible seed. So if you still see yourself as a person born of a corruptible seed. Then corruption will catch up with you. But when you begin to see yourself differently. Then you begin to think differently. And begin to talk differently. Let me tell you, all the devils in hell combined can face one Christian. Yes. You know what I just said? Yes. You didn't hear what I just said. I said all the demons in hell, all combined, can face one Christian. You know, the Bible says that for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish. Should not what? Perish. So, so the word perish means that to be part of corruption. The one who does not believe in Jesus is part of the corruption. When we say corruption, we're talking about spiritual death. Because it says death reigned from Adam to Moses. I don't have time to go into that. Amen. 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 But then he says that, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have. The life and the nature and the character, the life of God, the nature of God's righteousness, the character of God's love, they are all imparted into our spirits. Not for us to walk in this world for nothing. And wait until we go to heaven. No. He wants us to display his kind or to display us his kind on this earth. Pastor Prince will be right back. When money comes into your hands now, you don't know where the money is. I see them attacking your money, your finances. So when you hold money, it's as if there is this demon, it's as if the demon is snatching the thing from you. Have you had a dream like that? You had a dream like that? Yes. You had a dream like that? If you get a good job, any good job you get, there will be an issue. They don't want to even see your face. Is that true? Yes. Is it true? I'm yes. telling you the truth. Cut out! We are here to change your life. At World Changes, we make things happen. Anytime you try to apply, they are always refused. Can you come so I pray for you? Testimonies are the manifestations of our inheritance in Christ. The Bible says in Psalm 96 verse 3 that, Publish his glorious deeds among the nations. Tell everyone about the amazing things he does. People like us, me, who ride bicycle and come here. Sometimes, in the night, it's up to you. You'll be on, on bicycle and everybody's driving and passing you. You are riding and going. You go to some time. I said, ah, why, why I do? What I do? It's a big testimony. I'm so happy. And it's a life-changing thing. When they showed me, they showed me the house I'm going to live in. I said, I spoke in tongues. Life had not been easy for my and then my siblings sometimes we don't have any food at home and we don't have any money even sometimes transportation to go to church wow. yeah had, uh, it, it was so bad now everything it's, it's okay with my family and I just bless God for Papa's life and for this ministry join us for our special teachings and prophetic service every last Sunday of the month 9.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. 
at Airport West Hotel, Accra. You can download other messages of Pastor Prince online by logging on to www.ministerprinceonline.org. You are blessed. You are watching Pastor Prince teaching. It's very powerful. So you see, God is, many Christians think we are looking up to God. But God is looking up to us. You hear what I just said? But I just on the sons of God. But it says that whosoever believes in him, it says, should not perish, but have the word only begotten son means the only born. The only born. The Greek word there means the only born. So God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He gave him. But you see, when John was talking, John was still talking in the Old Testament. Because you see, even though it is the gospel of John, it was still the Old Testament. The scripture says that a testament is or a will is of effect. Only when the testator dies. So when a person gives his will until he dies, his will cannot be enforced. Did you hear what I just said? Did you hear what I just said? So it means that even though Jesus had been born and was walking on this earth, his will had not yet taken effect until he died. If your father leaves a will behind, you can't go and begin to share the properties, can you? Because he has left a will. No. You can only share when he dies. When he calls the whole children and says, oh, I have a will. It is there. It is with my lawyer. <laughs> you still can't share his property at that particular time unless he dies. You hear what I just said? So the testament of Jesus couldn't take effect unless he dies. And the time that John was talking, Jesus had not died. When he was given, when Jesus was given as the only son. Are you following what I'm saying? Shout a big hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he was the only son in the gospels. But after Jesus resurrected from the dead, died and was raised from the dead, he ceased to be the only son. He became the first son. Among other sons. So in the gospels. Jesus. Is the only son of God. In the epistle. Jesus is the first son. Among many brothers. And what is the brothers? We are here. Come on shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So he says that now are we the sons of God. 1 John chapter 1 chapter 3 says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Beloved, what? Now. Says, what manner of love the Father has lavished upon us that we should be called the sons of God. It says, because of that, the world does not know us because the world did not know him. Then it says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. So, in the gospel, he referred to him as the son of God. In the epistles, he refers to him as the first one among many sons. Then he refers to us as sons of God. Who is the son of God here? Who is the child of God here? We are child of God, shout a big glory. glory. Are you following what I'm saying? So it's very important that we know that we are sons of God. That we know. It's very important that we are conscious of the truth that we are sons of God. Oh. It's very important. Sometimes some of these things are taken for granted. It's very important. That the Christian knows that he is a child of God. He is born of God. And he is different and unique among men. Shout a big hallelujah. hallelujah. So we are sons of God. We are children of God. We are born of Him. His seed remains in us. His life is in us. God's life is in us. God's nature, 
The nature of righteousness is called the divine nature of God. It's in our spirits. God's character of love is in our spirits. God's work is in our spirits. It's called the work of faith. Think about it. So you are loaded. But let me give you the full load. Can I give you the full load? Yes. yes. Thank you for watching. We know you have been blessed. Join Pastor Prince next week as he continues the series, The Father and His Relations. You are blessed. Hello. Welcome to Changing Your World with Pastor Prince. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's a blessing to come your way this time. You see, the scripture says in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, it says, Who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth? It says, God wants all men, not some men. All men, including you that are not born, you are not born again, I'm speaking to you. He wants all men to be saved. Why? Because until you are saved, you are still under the dominion of darkness. You are still under the dominion of the devil. You have still made the devil the lord of your life. You are identified with him and his nature of sin. You cannot stop sinning unless you are born again. That's why Jesus said you must be born again. So God wants all men to be saved. When you are saved, you are identified with the lordship of Jesus. When you are saved, you are planted, placed in the kingdom of his dear son you are placed in christ jesus so if you are not yet born again this is an opportunity for you to be born again and if you are not yet born again confess this after me say lord jesus i believe you were raised from the dead by the glory of the father i confess you as my lord and savior thank you for coming into my heart amen and if you are saved you need knowledge you need knowledge but i pray for you i pray in the name of jesus that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened that you'll be flooded with light that the spirit of wisdom and revelation will be operational in and through you in the name of jesus that you may come to the knowledge of the truth in the mighty name of jesus I release the blessings of the Spirit on your life. I command healings to take place right now. Every sicknesses, spirits of infirmities, spirits of cancer, spirits of tumor, tuberculosis, come out in the name of Jesus. I release healing. I minister healing into your body. I minister healing into your bones in the mighty name of Jesus. I release miracles on your path. Miracles in the name of Jesus. I release your testimony in the name of Jesus. You are blessed. Glorious things are spoken of you. Till we come your way next time, remain blessed. Amen. If you said the sinner's prayer with Pastor Prince, you are now born again. Hallelujah. Join the World Changers family this and every Sunday morning at Airport West Hotel, Accra. 9.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. You can also call the following numbers for more information. You are blessed. 